Hey guys, you ever taken a shower? I know I have. I should probably take one again, but today we're gonna talk about soaps. Bar soap, liquid soap, and seeing which is better. So today we're gonna compare your classic toilet soap or hard soap and your liquid soap or detergent. Now, these two products ultimately act as surfactants, and surfactants are essential in keeping our bodies clean because they combine the lipophilic component of our skin and oils that we naturally slough off and collect grime and debris with the hydrophilic component of water to allow those two to interact with each other. They form these compounds that surround and attack the oil and then encapsulate it in the hydrophilic end of the molecule and that's called a micelle. So surfactants basically allow oils to be washed cleanly off the body. Now how do they get to that point? Well basically the mechanism of creating soap or detergents is a combination of mixing some form of triglyceride or fatty acid and a strong base. Now depending on the source of your triglyceride or fat could determine what the overall product will be. Same thing with the base that's used. If you're using a, a lye or sodium hydroxide uh, as your base, then the salt that will be formed will be, tend to be solid or hard. And if you're using potassium hydroxide, that will tend to be soft, like a detergent. And the overall process of making soap with lye is called saponification. It's the same process that's been used for generations, if not millennia. And typically they'll use animal fats like tallow, which is a beef lard. It is widely available um, and relatively inexpensive. There are ethical and environmental considerations when you're looking at beef derived products um, because of the carbon and resources needed um, for beef cultivation. But overall, this is considered more or less a waste product, so it's hard to really calculate what the environmental impact of tallow is specifically. However, the vegetable-based saturated fats, either coconut or palm oil, have been studied heavily and they can both be used in hard and soft soaps. Now, coconut oil is probably the most environmental friendly overall, at least because it has a much smaller percentage of production compared to palm oil. Now, palm oil has been studied um, quite extensively. It is the most common source of the vegetable fats used in soaps and detergents around the world. And basically, as a summary, there's been many different studies that have looked at the environmental impact of cultivating palm oil. The bottom line is this. So it is actually a bad or a positive carbon impact in terms of harvesting uh, palm oil from territory that used to be a rainforest. Now on the flip side, if non-rainforest lands were used to promote palm development, then it actually turns out to be a net carbon sink. And the carbon that is used and sequestered into the product actually outweighs the carbon that would be produced um, by either the manufacturing process or the harvesting of the palm oil. It's important to know where your resources are coming from and you can actually look into it if you reach out to different companies and see what their source of palm oil is. So palm oil, tallow, coconut oil, that's where you get your fats and your fatty acids and then your basic chemical bases will be used to mix together. And basically the process of creating these two is saponification in hard soap and ethoxylation in liquid soap. Now saponification is a low energy process. In fact, you can make homemade soaps. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Whereas ethoxylation can actually require quite a bit of heat generation. So heat sequestration from that process is something to think about from a thermal energy standpoint, as well as water waste, because there is a lot of dirty water excess that has to be filtered off to make the products pure. Now soaps can also contain antibiotics. The most common is triclocarbon. Triclocarbon was really common in the early 80s, 90s, 2000s, and then it's slowly been phased out. I think the FDA is actually limiting its use in most commercial products because it hasn't been shown to be any more effective at fighting uh, bacteria, particularly Staph aureus, which is a skin bacteria that we all have, um, than just normal soap. So again, when you're looking at normal soap, the way that it works is through the lipid component of the salt. And the lipid component of the salt helps break down certain structures and cells and viruses. So viruses that contain a lipid envelope like coronavirus that causes COVID-19. That's why it's important to use real soap because it is the best thing that you can use and it's better than the alcohols in breaking apart the um, virion structure. So 
We discussed basically the raw materials, which is the detergent or the soap salt itself. And then you also wanna think about packaging. So packaging when it comes to hand soaps is obviously much less. That weight of the package is negligible and it's typically wrapped in a thin plastic, which is usually a low density polyethylene, um, which is class four in terms of the recycling number versus a class two high density polyethylene, which is used in containers. Now these can be recycled at home. So if you wash these bottles out, it's easy to recycle them. The low density is um, a little harder to dispose of, you can collect plastic bags and waste like we do and then drop it off once a month at the local county um, waste processing facility. So overall, what is the benefit between hard soap and soft soap? Well, in general, hard soap is better for hard water environments. So if you have high concentration of dissolved minerals like magnesium and calcium in your water, um, hard soap is better. It will basically lather more and emulsify more. Um, and for that reason, it tends to make people feel a little bit more clean, but it does worsen your dry skin in some situations because it doesn't have the moisturizing component that the liquid soaps do. So for soft water, this is better. It doesn't lather quite as much in hard water. And for that reason, you end up using more than you need to, and it can be a little bit wasteful. This does contain you know, these different emulsifiers and chemicals, they can be caustic and almost create allergic reactions in some people. So if you have sensitive skin, I'd actually recommend bar soap. Now, what about disposal? Well, overall, less waste, less packaging, and the product itself basically just disappears with hard soap. So certainly from a disposal standpoint, um, hard soaps take the win. And of course, you have normal recycling for this. So as long as you recycle or reuse these bottles, the environmental impact is certainly more, but not catastrophic. Now, the other thing to know is that there are non-polyphenol ethoxylates that can be um, byproducts in some soaps and detergents, particularly often more commercial grade, and those can be actually derived from petroleum, um, but they can have toxic and endocrine effects, so just keep in mind. You may see warnings or advertisements about sulfate or parabens or phthalates, and they are more prevalent in liquid soaps and shampoos, but the evidence really isn't that strong that they form any sort of endocrine or neurological or environmental impact, especially in the quantities um, that you would come in contact with. So these are not meant to be ingested no matter what product you, you have. If you're sensitive to these products, avoid them. If you have infants or small children, maybe I would be a little extra careful, but overall, it really doesn't make much of a difference. And you can go to the FDA website. I will link down to some of those links below so that you can double check for yourself. So from a product quality standpoint, both have their purposes. Overall, I would lean more honestly towards hard soap most of the time. Now, what about the cost of these products? Now, you've probably seen some videos or research um, and just in your own life, you might have realized that hard soaps tend to be cheaper, but how much cheaper is it? Well, I crunched the numbers. I looked at uh, three different online and retail distributors, Amazon, Walgreens, and Walmart. And I looked at the most common brands that I saw on their website or on the shelves. And I compared the hard version and the liquid version and just look at the overall cost. Now, in my research, again, everyone's gonna use soap differently with different quantities based on the amount of hair that you have, um, how dirty you get, how many times you shower, etc. But assuming that on average, most people get about seven washes from one ounce of hard soap, and they get about 2.9 or three washes for every liquid ounce of liquid soap, okay? So with those numbers, I actually determined what the overall price per wash was for each of the respective products. So here's a list from Amazon. In the left column, you have basically the raw data. I just looked at the price, how many ounces, and I just calculated cost per ounce and therefore a cost per wash in dollars. And you can see that it averages about eight cents per wash with hard soap from these numbers. The liquid soap, is 17 cents per wash. Now Walgreens, the average for similar products actually was a little bit less expensive, about 6.7 cents per wash for the average of all the hard soaps. And here, about 16 cents for the liquid equivalent. And lastly, I did Walmart. Walmart was the most expensive for this particular unscientific survey. And we see that's about nine cents per wash and their body wash is about 18 cents. So overall, I summarized the data here. We see that if we assume, again, seven and three as the amount of washes per ounce respectively, 
the average overall, there was about 25 bucks, give or take, for hard soap, which is $58 per year for liquid soap. The cheapest hard soap overall in July of 2020 happened to be Jergens, when purchased from Walgreens, and that'll cost you $6 a year. And the cheapest body wash well, you'll get from Walmart, that's the Ivory body wash, and that was $16 per year. So again, still um, a fair amount less, about 70% less if you go with a hard soap versus a body wash. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what about making your own soap? It can be done. It's got to be the greenest and the cheapest way to do it. Not true. So basically, if you look at coconut oil, olive oil, distilled water, lye, the essential oils, all the basic ingredients that you would want to do to make your own soap, when you think about the cost per ounce and the cost per wash of the finished product, you ultimately get about 12 cents per wash, which is almost 50% more expensive than the average commercial soap that's available. And that'll cost you about $45 a year. Again, if we compare that to the average overall, it's almost double. In sum, Hard and soft soaps are both effective detergents. They both are good cleansers, but for hard water and for most people, I'd recommend the bar. And from a cost saving perspective, I would also recommend bar soap. So tell me what you think, tell me what you use and what you like, and uh, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this if you found it helpful. Um, and I really appreciate your time. Have a great day, thanks.